My name is Rahul Katari, and today I want to talk to you about democracies. More specifically, I want to talk about the Indian, American, and British democracies. Democracies to me are endlessly fascinating, and today they're also at a critical point in time. Any government should serve its people, whether they agree or disagree with each other. Whether someone voted for or against the current government should have no impact on what the government provides for its citizens. I came into this project want wanting to know if democracies work, but to do that, we have to know how and why they work. By population size, India is the largest democracy in the world. America is the second largest, and Great Britain, well, it's not even in the top five, but it is the only one that's considered a full democracy by The Economist. Their leaders right now are Donald Trump for the USA, Boris Johnson for the UK, and Narendra Modi for India. Every democracy should have some qualifiers, some markers to see how well they're doing. And there's, there's a lot of these. Election security and election processes. The way people are educated and the quality of that education. But some are more important than others. In the end, I settled on three that encompass what it means to be a democracy. Initially, my main goal was just to figure out solutions to problems that the US democracy was facing. But as I researched other countries' solutions to those problems, I got more and more intrigued into their own problems. So here we are today. I have three countries in mind and three categories to compare them with. The three categories that I settled on are these. Checks and balances, which for our purposes is a check by independent governmental agencies on the group or individual in power. In essence, it's the prevention of elements of a dictatorship within a democracy. Next, the judiciary and law. By that, I mean preventing the illegal activities of government officials, for example, corruption, and the government's ability to enforce just laws on its population. Could this count as a check and balance? Yes, absolutely. But it's such a large and important facet of a democracy that it deserves further scrutiny. Finally, the media and public opinion. This has to be free in order for a democracy to truly function as a democracy. Without a free media, the freedom of public opinion, which includes the way people are educated, and at least a semblance of transparency, any notion that a country is really a democracy can be thrown out the window. In the next few videos, I'm going to go more into detail on the successes and failures of each of these countries in each of these three aspects. I hope you'll join me as we explore the hidden truths and the nuances of three of the world's most important democracies.